What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you news uh, from the past day or so which you may have missed and let's start with some interesting points from Bungie's latest weekly update which dropped last night. Firstly they talk about in-game and possibility of increasing fire team numbers for the escalation protocol due to it at the moment being super hard for the standard fire team. Quoting Bungie right here, Escalation Protocol has been live for two weeks now. Ever since the launch of Warmind, we've seen Guardians bravely battling hordes of Hive on Mars. The bravest among you have gone on to defeat seven levels of bosses. As always, combat leads to feedback. Today, we're responding to a popular request for new matchmaking systems that would unite nine players in battle. Lead design Jacob Benton has some comments about this new activity in Destiny. What were the design goals for the Escalation Protocol? Jacob, Escalation Protocol was designed to be a high difficulty endgame activity for a max level 3 player fire team. Other players in the world can contribute to make it easier, but they shouldn't be required as long as your team is highly skilled and coordinated. We've received a lot of feedback since the original launch of Destiny 2 that players felt like reaching max power was not satisfying. There weren't enough activities that required and rewarded that level of commitment. Escalation Protocol was designed to fill that gap. So this activity was not specifically designed for 9 players. Other than raid activities, all PvE activities and private spaces are optimised for 3 players to allow for multiple types of activities in the space, so no, it wasn't designed for it. But it's not a surprise that it's easier with 9 players, given how underleveled most of us are right now. We knew that players would use the same creative workarounds to get 9 players into a space similar to Carter Varix, but we did not specifically tune the difficulty around requiring that many players. Any plans to enable larger fire teams in the future? future. We have had a lot of conversations about what to do to answer the community's feedback. We're going to continue to monitor as more players progress up to max power and are able to attempt escalation protocol at the difficulty it was designed for and we'll determine what if any action is necessary. We are also hearing players are really enjoying large groups of players fighting against enemies, so we'll use that feedback to inform our future plans. Now to me, I've taken this game super slow, I haven't rushed to a top level as I want to enjoy the content while it lasts. People get burned out too quick and only bitch about there being nothing to do. At the pace I'm taking, I will have months left to play to reach that top level and I'm happy with that. Level as we all know doesn't mean much in this game anyway. But on that point, me taking my time to level up means the escalation protocol is super hard for me. But I'm happy with it, it doesn't bother me, it's something for me to work towards. At the moment it's almost impossible for me to do, but if fire teams were bigger, then I guess it would become a possibility. I'd love to see bigger fire teams being able to free roam planets. It's something we've always wanted from the get go. Let's hope they consider our ideas. Moving on, and Bungie then going to speak about changes coming to exotic armors. Now we've seen the changes coming to many exotic weapons and they are great. And I think we can all agree, some armors definitely need buffs as some are pretty much useless. Well on May 29th with the 1.2.1 update, we will see 6 exotic pieces, 2 for each class, receive buffs. For the Titan we have the Sync Forceps, Mechanical Changes, previously the perk uh, adjusted your melee damage depending on the number of enemies surrounding you, now it grants a flat bonus to melee and super damage when you are surrounded by 3 or more enemies. The buff is retained for a short duration after you are no longer surrounded. Although Sync Forceps have gotten a fair bit of love in the Crucible, players are often focused on the increased launch rate. The outgoing damage bonus was hard to appreciate and plan around with it being so viable in nature. With this change, you will be able to feel the impact more often in all scenarios, particularly in PvE. Changes to the Lion Rampant, mechanical changes, you can now hit fire while lift is active without interrupting it and your aerial hit fire doesn't have any aerial accuracy penalty. The Lion Rampant was focused around lift and how it impacts your playstyle and tactics, so we decided to push further in that direction, emphasising fast moving aerial assault. For the Hunter, the Dragon's Shadow. Mechanical changes, dodging reloads all weapons simultaneously. The effects of Wraith Metal Mail now also include a bonus to mobility. Although the Dragon Shadow does have a small following, we wanted to make it more powerful in a general sense under even neutral conditions, while keeping in the theme of a fast moving ninja. The Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves. Mechanical changes, swapping to a sidearm while critically wounded greatly increases its damage. We went for the fantasy of a hold out weapon, the pistol tucked into your sleeve that you pull out in an emergency to save you, these changes should let you turn around a fight more easily. And for the warlock, the lunification boots, mechanical changes, 
Roof Reload is automatic instead of being activated on entry and exit. Empowering Roof makes weapons more effective at extended ranges. Players having to dip in and out of the Rift to reload their weapons was not consistent with other Rift effects, particularly with the Overshield effect on Healing Rift. It's been made automatic to be easier to understand and use, as this is a more offensive choice in terms of Rift exotics. We also wanted to further reward players who don't want to double down with Empowering Rift instead of playing it safe with Healing Rift. Sun Braces, Mechanical Changes, Original Effect Replaced with Increases Duration of Solar Grenade. Solar Melee Kills grant unlimited solar energy for a brief time. While effective under some circumstances in terms of things like flat damage output with your solar grenade, some braces didn't feel flashy enough for gloves where your hands are perpetually on fire. So while retaining the original flavour of the solar grenade exotic armour, we've scaled up the potential output significantly to give the player a strong taste of power on a more frequent basis. So some pretty decent changes coming to these exotics people, I can't wait to test some of these beauties out for sure. And moving on, and we have a few more notes for the May 29th 1.2.1 update. So Destiny 2 servers will undergo maintenance on Tuesday, May 29th. No downtime is expected during this time. Destiny update 1.2.1 will become available to players. Here is the timeline for the maintenance window. 9am PDT, which is 1600 UTC, is when Destiny 2 server maintenance is scheduled to begin. No downtime is expected. Destiny 2 Update 1.2.1 will be available to download and install. 1 p.m. PDT, which is 2000 UTC, Destiny 2 server's maintenance is scheduled to conclude. Players who have not installed Update 1.2.1 will be removed from activities to begin the download and install process. And here is a quick overview of issues that should be resolved in this Destiny Update 1.2.1. Fix an issue where players would lose glow rank points for leaving a match too soon after the match ends. Fix an issue where the clan XP milestone was not granting a powerful reward. Fix an issue where Vanguard Boons would block progression of strike specific quest steps and milestones. Fix an issue where Shriekers would close too quickly during the Warstat public events. Basically here stopping the ability to trigger a heroic public event. Fix an issue where Kallus' shields require too much damage to break after Destiny 1.2.0. Fix an issue where players would experience long load times for Iron Banner matches on PC. Not sure about PC, you're getting them on console too. Now the clan XP milestone engrams did do my head in. I could easily be a much higher level right now if these were corrected from the get go, but oh well, it is what it is. Just don't open them people, hopefully the ones that we have saved will magically turn into powerful engrams which match our level and help us progress higher. But we will see people, we will see. One thing I did expect to see within this Bungie weekly update was them talk about the current issue many are having with the Iron Lord's emote and how you can only get this by paying for it. And you can't get it dropped as a loot reward. But there is no mention of it, I suppose there hasn't been enough uproar about it yet for them to even give a crap. But trust me guys, if they get away with this instance it will only get worse next time, you mark my words. On that note guys, I am out. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, truly does help me out. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.